explain what's driving these decisions is Benham Ben Talablu with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Good morning and thanks for joining us today. So what other options are there for accountability? And is there a point of pursuing them if the man accused of ordering the killing isn't sanctioned? Well, great to be with you, Alex. Good morning. Uh, in essence, I think this is the Biden team uh, where they're uh, trying to have their rhetoric meet reality, particularly the rhetoric from the campaign. Uh, I think it's clear that they're in governing mode now and that there is a wide series of issues between the Saudis and the Americans where even the Biden administration uh, believes, you know, per their own talking point, that it's about recalibrating or resetting uh, the U.S.-Saudi relationship rather than rupturing. You've seen them at least politically downgrade the relationship. You've uh, uh, informally, albeit, uh, you've seen the Middle East put a pause in arms sales. Uh, you've seen them put more pressure on the Saudis to end the war in Yemen, for instance. Uh, you've seen them uh, kind of make continued outreach to the Saudis' adversary in the region, yeah, Iran, for a more, in their view, balanced regional approach uh, when it comes to nuclear diplomacy. Uh, and so the Biden team has done all of these things and even put out that report. And I think they want the report to speak for itself, not uh, their sanctions, for instance. So White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the U.S.-Saudi relationship is a big factor. I want our viewers to take a listen to this. There are areas where we have an important relationship with Saudi Arabia, intelligence sharing, uh, also helping defend against the threats and the rocket attacks that they are getting, um, uh, you know, getting from uh, bad actors uh, right at their doorstep. And, you know, global diplomacy requires um, holding uh, countries accountable when needed, but also acting in the national interest of the United States. And that's exactly what the president's trying to do. OK, so, Benham, where do things stand between U.S. and the Saudis at this point? Well, I certainly think things are a bit rocky, but this move had been telegraphed for a long time coming. We know, again, during the Biden campaign, after the November election, and now that they're even into office, there has been this strong desire to signal something different, particularly when it comes to human rights and then also when it comes to the war in Yemen. Uh, but again, there are so many more outsized factors keeping and sustaining this relation, not just to mention U.S. forces in the region, uh, the strong oil and economic ties, but perhaps more importantly, the overall U.S. desire in the region to maintain the regional status quo and push back on the Islamic Republic. And in that regard, Saudi Arabia remains a key pillar. And I think the, the, the State Department and the White House, uh, in, in this essence, was making a decision based on that broader context uh, and is trying to find a way, and in fact still struggling to find a way, uh, to put human rights and rank order human mm -hmm. rights into that strategic context. So what does this then mean for the U.S. and interests across the Middle East region as a whole? Well, our adversaries are certainly watching this as right. well. Definitely, you could say that the Trump team was not afraid to use human rights as a bludgeon against the Islamic Republic, uh, which is both the U.S. adversary and the Saudi adversary in the region. Uh, but at the same time, there's this thing that the State Department has done called the Khashoggi ban, which uh, applies extraterritorially uh, and is used against those who would threaten or intimidate or harass or attack journalists. And let's hope that Washington is able to apply this ban uh, to journalists, regardless of where they're from and regardless of who is pursuing them, because intimidation of the press, particularly the free press, uh, should be condemnable full stop. All right, Ben and Ben Talablu, always good to have you help us sort through these things. Thank you. Thanks so much. Pleasure.